Hello everyone, this is Endgame March. We'll do another unboxing, another breakdown, another demo. This is Shadow of the Beast. This is another import game from Hong Kong. This is also another PlayStation exclusive that and I don't think anybody really to talk about or even really I didn't even I'd heard about the game, but I never even knew it released until and I didn't even know it had a physical copy until I just bumped into it. But uh, Shadow of the Beast is an old game that came back on the original Sega Genesis console, or the Master System, if you will. And they had both, the, uh, there was one and two of the Shadow of the Beast, but I think most people will remember the first one, the most. Uh, I did play a little bit of the original first one, but I don't have any nostalgia of it, so I can't really base opinion of which one was better, if they did it justice. But I did play a little bit of it so they get an idea of it. The cool thing about this game is that it also comes with the original one on the game. So you just got to build up in-game currency and, you, and, you, and then you can buy it. Well, uh, to start off, there was no updates for the game. So either A, that the updates are already on the disc or there was no updates period for this game when it first released. As well as that the, backs of the, bo the back of the case is wrong about the size of the, how much hard drive space you need to require. I recommend you have about 9 gigabytes of space free on your hard drive, minimum. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Now, as I said, this game it has the original first uh, Shadow, of, uh, Shadow of the Beast, but it also has allows an upgrading system where you can upgrade your abilities, make you attack, uh, be able to absorb more life, get more blood and stuff like that to do your powers and stuff like that. Now, I recommend your first thing you should put points in is absorb more life because this game may look a little easy in this video. I was a little worried about when I was doing this recording because I made it look super easy, but I was getting really good at this game. But... Uh, the game can become quite challenging, even on normal on normal difficulty. Uh, the game has a function like the "Who Strikes First Wins" concept, which that's kind of work how it worked in the original first Shadow of the Beast. It's all about timing and then uh, making sure your position is not being flanked, as you can see here. I'm being attacked, but I you got to learn how to block and parry, and as well as stun the enemy, as well as know when to use your blood gauge to absorb more life or get uh and absorb another special attack move that's which will be shown on eventually here it's all pretty fluid and smooth and it's very gruesome and very dark and mean i really really enjoyed it it almost felt like a 2d version of god of war it's like if this was god of war's beast version if this is what he really looks like and i personally really really enjoyed it now i did like how the fact that it was like you can't really figure out what's going on until you like unlock like special dialogue options where you can like um, uh retranslate their words so you have to like play the game unlock money and you can start translating what the enemies are saying uh i should probably also say that the game is fully in english there's english menus subtitles as well as english voice acting uh the game is just uh, an all to play and i really really personally enjoyed this game and it, again it just blows my mind that you don't hear too many people talking about it and as i said that I've always, oftenly say this, that PlayStation always funds interesting games, and a lot of their exclusives go overlooked, much like Alienation and like Knack and so many other ones that I personally really enjoy, but a lot of people seem to push to the side, or it doesn't get the recognition it deserves. And Shadow of the Beast is just another one of those. It's... It's a simple, straightforward game, but you can't just think you can go in there and just be like wreck havoc. Now, once you learn how to fight and be able to parry and dodge, you start becoming like the ultimate badass and you even feel like the badass. But when you let your guard down and you start getting overconfident, the enemy will start well up on you. They'll start beating you down really quickly. So it's all about making sure that you know how to approach each enemy. Now, there, you don't see a lot of the variety of the other enemies, but there will be more other enemies that you might have to approach more. You have to block to get even to be able to get near him. As you can see here, it's, this is a special rage mode where you can perfectly time it, and then you keep switching back, and it keeps getting faster and faster. And it becomes quite hard, trust me. You get, I don't, I've tried many times to try to get as hard as I can. It's not easy to keep going that flow going. But also the other cool thing is that it has this point system. Now I'm not a big point system person, but uh, I do like the fact that if you like those special fights you just saw I was doing there, if you can get through it per flawlessly without getting hit and without taking damage or any, uh, playing perfectly that match, you will get a platinum. And what a platinum coin will give you is that it will give you an elixir. And if you die, you would be able to use the elixir to revive yourself. And if you don't, 
uh, have any more elixirs and you die, you will have to consume an innocent person's soul to uh, revive yourself. So, now, I was, it makes you always feel kind of bad to consume, and it'll keep track of how many souls you've consumed of an innocent person. As well as you can climb and grab and jump off ledges here. As I've shown you here, you can like um, jump off ledges and slide off. And there's sometimes lots of hidden paths that you have to climb up and figure out. Uh, so it's got a little bit of exploration. Not super exploration, but it's at least acknowledgeable that you can be able to have some fun by looking around a little bit. It's like I said, it's a good little 2D God of War in my opinion. It's It was a pretty fun game, and I'm, I'm quite proud and glad that I have this physical copy of this game, much like Alienation. It's just a joy to play, and it just blows my mind you don't hear anybody talking about it. And like I said, and it just blows my mind again that this the only physical copy out there is uh, available only at Hong Kong. It's just, like I said, it's just I don't understand why they do this, and I don't understand why would they limit it. It's like I said, it's full in English, it's still fun, and there was no updates, it's just a joy to play. So, like I said, man, it's, I, I, I'm proud to have this game in my collection, and I think you all would like this too. As long as you're okay with the gruesomeness and everything like that, and you can tolerate that. It can get quite frustrating and hard, because the enemies, will, you'll like have a lot of enemies on your screen. It'll, it'll become more, quite overwhelming. Well... Like always, I will leave links down in the description if you're interested in a copy. Uh, again, there's not too many people selling a copy, so I don't. I will try to provide them as many links as I can to what the best suitable places for you guys. So I appreciate every single one of you guys, and I love. I just love these kinds of games, and I just think that I mean, Sony invests in such interesting games, and a lot of them go so unnoticed. And I think you all should really take the time to check out this game, and as among the other games that I've done many videos over. So. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!